he worked very hard. I understand he was he became a house painter to earn a living. He um, took an equivalency diploma at those at that at his time, uh, and he was accepted into NYU Dental School. He spent four years in NYU Dental School. When he worked full time, when my mother was growing up, and you know he had his practice. Then he'd come home, be with the family, have dinner, and then he would spend some time like writing. So he was doing both. He enjoyed surgery and uh, he began to specialize in the dental surgery. And he was a pretty good surgeon too. He was also a boaster. <laughs> He's very proud of the fact that he had two chairs, not one. And there was a back room, which was a laboratory where they would make the various dentures it was at the corner of Church and Utica. I guess it was the southwest corner. You had to walk up a long flight of stairs. and It was on the second floor. I still see that in my dreams. The office uh, had a long hall to walk in. On the right was the laboratory room, and then he had treatment rooms, two treatment rooms. He had a business office uh, where the secretary sat. He was good with extractions. So if somebody had an impaction, which normally would go to a an oral surgeon who had an extra year or two of postgraduate education at that time, too. He did it himself. Some of his gold inlays lasted a long time. His crowns held. Crown, you know, when you fit a crown over a tooth, the, the distance between the end of the crown and the tooth, it, as small as it is, the bacteria could get in. But they didn't. They lasted. Judy's dental work lasted a long time. An older person at the time came up to me and said, you know, you see these? These are your father's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, his patients, he used to talk, lecture them on Talmudic topics when they had cotton stuffed in their mouths or they couldn't even speak back. My mother was always afraid to go there. Um, and that was based on experience, I think. So I think that he um, may or may not have believed in Novocaine, at least under some or all circumstances. So I think by the time I would have lost my children's teeth, my juvenile teeth, so which is like around six or seven years old, he was probably retired at that point from, from dentistry. At least once, if not twice, I had people sort of come up and just sort of grab me and say, your, your grandfather did dental work for me for no charge during the Depression, and how grateful they were about that. His fees were less than what I charged. A lot of people who couldn't afford, he did gratis. He did free work, but I, he did. At least he did for me, he did my work free. He had at least one patient who was the classic starving artist, and I think must have had very bad teeth or a lot of dental issues. So he accepted uh, artwork for the dental work. So there are uh, charcoal commissions, pa oil paintings. The one in my mother's house, I think, is, is from the 30s. The one that I've got here is from the 50s, so no longer Depression era, but the guy's still trading, his, trading portraits for, for the dental work. 